Good evening and welcome to the Commonwealth Report. I'm State Senator Mark Pacheco and tonight uh, we have the Secretary who deals with all the economic development uh, uh, issues in the Commonwealth, Secretary Gregory Bialecki, and he'll be talking about economic development in uh, Massachusetts in general, uh, but also focusing uh, our conversation a bit on southeastern Massachusetts as well. So please stay tuned. Uh, and we'll be right back with the Commonwealth Report. I've got a job to do today. I've got a job to do today. Have a good first day at work, Mom. Your donations to Goodwill fund job training programs right in your community. Feels good to start fresh, right? Sure does. And like that, you're a job creator. Thank you for turning into the Commonwealth Report. This is State Senator Mark Pacheco. And tonight we have uh, Greg Bialecki, who is uh, the Secretary of uh, Secretary of Economic Development. Housing right? and Economic housing. Development. Housing. I keep forgetting housing, and I sit on the committee. So uh, housing and economic development for the Commonwealth of, uh, of Massachusetts and uh, uh, I just wanted to thank you for taking the time to be on the program and also for being in southeastern Massachusetts so much uh, uh, these last uh, a few months. Actually, uh, since you've been secretary, you've been very active on the ground, uh, out there, uh, all over the state, and finding out where the money that's being authorized is actually being spent. And I like that because it shows the, a hands-on uh, uh, you know, part of uh, what you are doing uh, from this administration's perspective, and uh, I appreciate that. So thank you very much for being here, and thank you for the, for the work that you're doing. Thanks. Well, thanks for the invitation, uh, and it's been fun to work with you, and uh, you and your other colleagues in the legislature uh, are very important partners to the governor and me, both because, uh, as you just said, we wouldn't have the tools to help promote economic development without the uh, authorizations uh, that you provide for infrastructure, workforce development, and in other areas. Uh, and also because you uh, and your colleagues, but in particular, you know, you've been very helpful to us in identifying within your district what are the most promising uh, opportunities. And that's really been a key for the governor and me in thinking about how to make investments. Where can we make public investments that are most likely to support and grow private investments uh, and to be really thoughtful about that. And uh, we have been able to take advantage of your guidance on identifying those opportunities uh, in Southeastern Mass. Mm -hmm. And when you, uh, when you look at just uh, your time in, in terms of dividing up your time uh, and, and also trying to respond uh, to the to the many crises that come up in any agency, you yeah. know, you know, with the type of portfolio, how do you, how do you, how do you do that? How do you, how do you structure it? Well, first of all, I'm very fortunate that we have some terrific uh, agency heads and department heads. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the day-to-day -day work uh, I know is getting done by our great team, um, regardless of whether I'm personally paying attention to it at any moment in time uh, or not. It's a, it's a large secretary. There's more than 800 people that work there. Um, and a lot of great hardworking people and so they keep things moving forward. For me in particular of those areas uh, I felt and really the governor pointed me in this direction that uh, given the great recession that we've been experiencing, the job creation has to be the number one uh, priority so I clearly am spending more time uh, on that um, and actually as you, you know, met, re referred to earlier uh, a lot of the time is just getting around the state if you look at what's happened um, in Massachusetts, uh, overall, Massachusetts has recovered from the recession stronger and faster than the rest of the country. Uh, earlier this year, we were the only the seventh state in the country to get all our jobs back. There's now more people. Uh, there's more jobs here in uh, Massachusetts today than there were five years ago before the start of the recession. So that's great, but um, we're one of only seven states in the country to have done that. Uh, and even so, that is a number for the state as a whole. And we know, as you get around the state, that uh, whether different regions and communities are seeing that economic recovery is very different. Uh, Boston and Cambridge have been very fortunate. Uh, they're very strong economies. 
uh, right now. And as you go south and west of the state, um, it has been a different picture, and the recovery has been slower there. So the governor has uh, really charged me to spend um, extra time uh, in thinking about how to make sure uh, that those regions of the state do participate in the recovery. And so when you look at the major issues that we, you know, we've been dealing with uh, from a policy perspective, and you see what is happening with uh, with uh, with technology, what's happening with uh, with uh, some companies that are outsourcing, some co companies that are uh, looking at uh, robo sourcing. I mean, there's 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 all kinds of uh, new terminology we see with the with the new economy. Right. Uh, that is uh, that is out there. How often do you get a chance to actually meet with? Uh, and I'm sure it's it's often, but meet with a lot of the uh, uh, the the academics, uh, the folks that are over at MIT, uh, in Harvard, and in other places in the uh, in the country, uh, talking about the new dynamics that are. Right. That are evolving uh, in terms of this this new economy we're heading into the transition into this new uh, really dynamic uh, economy that is very much knowledge based. Right. So we do spend a lot of time thinking about that. Both, as you say, we have experts within the state uh, among the ap academic community. A professor Barry Bluestone at Northeastern mm -hmm. has been extremely helpful has been a great partner with us, particularly on thinking about manufacturing and the kind of new generation manufacturing uh, that we can still be competitive here in the United States and, and in Massachusetts. And also, as you say, we do spend time uh, working with other experts from around the country because when you're going through the big changes that our Massachusetts economy has been going through over the last 5, 10, 15 years, uh, you want to have that sense of perspective. Is, is what's happening here also happening to other people around the United States, around the world? Uh, in some cases, I think there's a, a tendency when things go well or don't go well in Massachusetts to attribute that to local causes. Oh, you know, the, a mayor is doing something well, a governor's doing something well or not. Um, and we have to keep perspective, I think, uh, in government that um, we're only going to be effective if we understand the larger, broader trends in the economy. Uh, you mentioned, for example, the disrupt disruptive effect of new technologies. Well, that's a fact of life. There's not right. going to be anything right. that government uh, is going to do. We're going to try to we, we can try to do some things to um, guide how that change occurs, but we can't uh, stop it. We don't want to stop it. What we want to do is understand it, uh, understand where it is creating new opportunities and take advantage of those and understand uh, where it is causing challenges and, and understand that. And if other states and countries are experiencing the same pressures, um, then what have they done in response? We have Massachusetts, I've learned, is sort of a funny state in that way. We, um, we think of ourselves as having uh, we're pretty smart people here and that we have the answers to the questions. And I think we don't always look enough to see what other what other people are doing, I know, Senator, in your case, that you have uh, spent time certainly understanding what other countries, particularly European countries, have done in clean energy and energy efficiency, mm -hmm. um, acknowledging that maybe there's some others who are doing things as well or better than we are, and even though we're smart people here, we can still learn something from them, and that's the attitude that we try to have as well. So, what are the opportunities? Uh, what are new technologies that? Uh, uh, we can have a growing cluster, life sciences, for example, uh, that if we uh, have a great cluster of life sciences companies here, is that not a growing industry? Is that not an emerging opportunity for us to take advantage of? Uh, and then on the other hand, what are the challenges? As you said, with uh, the rise of technology, uh, a lot of displacement of, of jobs, and uh, what, what does that mean? What do we have to do? One of the things that we decided we do have to do is a much better job of education and workforce training, not just for young people to prepare them for these um, uh, 
demanding careers. Uh, you know, you have to have com you have to be comfortable with computers at so many levels of jobs now, not just the very high end jobs, um, but also to have lifelong learning. So you and I have talked about uh, mm -hmm. creating a facility at uh, Miles Standish, for example, um, that would be not only a resource for uh, young people who want to come into the technology field, but also a resource to the employers that are in the business park. How do uh, they make sure that the skills of their empl employees are constantly upgraded as they have new equipment and new technology in their workplaces? Yes, I, I, think, I think that's going to be uh, extremely important for uh, the future, in particular of southeastern Massachusetts. Uh, obviously, in our region of the state, uh, we've gone through some uh, major challenges, uh, moving from industrial revolution t to the technology and now high technology revolution, and and we're still uh, trying to uh, embrace the, the the innovation economy. And there there are components of the innovation economy that are doing well in the southeast region, <coughs> but. Uh, the link between uh, higher education uh, and those industries and back to the community is not totally formed. Uh, right. but we're in the we're in the process of seeing that happen, and and the support uh, of uh, uh, your secretariat in understanding that uh, will be crucial for uh, the future. Of our region, because it's as you, as you say, we're we're not going back. We're right. we're moving forward, and it's happening all over the world. And so we've got to try to figure it out best we can to to see uh, how all of our people, not just uh, you know the best and the brightest of of the people, but all of the people, uh, have a uh, a fair shot and opportunity at this. Uh, New, uh, you know, new economy that uh, we're we're in the midst of a, of a major change. Right, and so that is critically important. You know, the the governor and I have talked for the last six years <laughs> about how uh, the innovation economy uh, creates tremendous opportunities for us in Massachusetts, and we're absolutely convinced that it does. Uh, given our history, as you said, we've been every time there's uh, a new wave of uh, innovation going back to the Industrial Revolution 150 years ago, 200 years ago, uh, Massachusetts has always been at the forefront. We don't think that's an accident. We think there's something about uh, people here. Uh, we're uh, highly educated. We are entrepreneurial people. Um, so we have an opportunity to really be at the cutting edge of, of change. But um, we also understand, Governor Patrick and I do, that uh, for many people, that change uh, can be very disruptive, can be uh, uh, anxiety provoking, and that it's really uh, our job to connect the dots and to show people, to show everybody where do they fit in in a new uh, economy. We have taken in particular, uh, for that reason, uh, a, we put a lot of focus on what we call advanced manufacturing. Mm -hmm. uh, Massachusetts has been a great center for manufacturing since the Industrial Revolution. Um, during uh, globalization, in the, starting in the 70s really, uh, a lot of the uh, manufacturing that was done here moved offshore. A lot of people were put out of work. Uh, it's caused some people to think that manufacturing is over in Massachusetts. It's history. Uh, and you and I know that's not true. And thanks mostly to the innovative entrepreneurial spirit of our manufacturers here, many of them are small and mid-sized firms. There's more than 7,000 of them in Massachusetts. They have reinvented themselves. And uh, we saw this at Miles Standish. They are in bio, whether it's biotechnology, uh, medical device, um, computer hardware, uh, analytic instruments, there's robotics, uh, there's so many ways that we have uh, developed a new generation of manufacturing here, and it is manufacturing that uh, we have reason to think we can be competitive because uh, the manufacturing process itself is very high tech. Uh, the workers that you need uh, to build and make these products have to be very well educated, um, and uh, they're they're not working on an assembly line. They're 
uh, using judgment. They're making decisions about, uh, they're, they're innovating constantly what works and doesn't work and trying something uh, different. And um, so, but we find that uh, that is an area where there's opportunities for people in every part of the state, in particular, I think, um, opportunities for people who don't have a four-year college degree. And that's mm -hmm. very important because Massachusetts, um, in Massachusetts, almost 40% of our adult workforce does have a four-year college degree. That's the highest in the country. We're proud of that. Uh, but that still means that most of the people in the workforce do not have a four-year college degree. And uh, as you said, we've, this has got to be a state um, where someone who does not have a four-year college degree can still see opportunity for themselves, the chance to make exactly. a, a, de yeah. a, de a decent living. And manufacturing is clearly uh, one way uh, for that to happen. And we see graduates of our Vogue Tech schools and our community colleges coming out of the uh, manufacturing and machine tool programs, uh, going right into good jobs, paying uh, $50,000, $60,000 to start in some cases. And, uh, and also we know that uh, that's a good business, that there's room to grow, the manufacturing is going to be around for a long time. Uh, I, I just got back, as you know, no, I was in, I was in Europe and, and I, was, uh, I, visited, I happened to visit a, uh, a uh, manufacturing facility of a solar company. And I asked them, how, how are you competing uh, against the Chinese? I said, it's, it's impossible for you to, for you to compete. And uh, he brought me, he said, well, I'll, I'll show you. He said, you can't take any photos. I said, okay. So we walked in and uh, robotics everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, robots, uh, you know, doing a lot of the work. And, uh, but, you know, somebody's going to make the robots mm -hmm. too. And when you, when you talk about this ad advanced manufacturing or in the, uh, or in the uh, medical device uh, sector, it's uh, it's it's another area in which we can be uh, we are doing a lot but we could be doing even even uh, even more it's my understanding that we have a lot of export a lot of our exports are in that are in that sector absolutely medical device i think is now our number one export around the world mm -hmm. that's right yeah so uh, so that's why i think that is part of the approach we talked about earlier about continuing to look forward mm -hmm. and not look back so to for example and that's a decision we see frequently in working with our local manufacturing firms. Um, they are, for example, requesting um, financial assistance. We do through mass development make loans available to manufacturing companies in addition that uh, often are more flexible terms than they can get from a, from a commercial bank. And uh, in many cases, those loans are for the purpose of buying new technology and new equipment. Uh, and the truth is that that is um, because with that new technology and equipment, uh, they can do more uh, with, without hiring more people. And so you'd say, well, why is that a smart thing for the state to be helping with? Why are, why are we going to help the plant uh, grow its output uh, but not grow the number of employees? Um, and in some cases, that is what happens. But the truth, you have to have the bigger picture uh, that, as you mentioned, um, in this very competitive world, uh, if it were not for the new equipment and technology, the plant wouldn't be able to compete and it wouldn't be here or it would choose to move to a place where the cost of la labor is a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. So we feel that uh, supporting our manufacturers and for example, we in general, uh, in our economic development programs, uh, we expect that companies are going to add jobs if we are making loans to them or giving them tax credits and so forth. We made a policy decision that with respect to manufacturing, we would offer support as long as they keep the number of employees. They don't have to grow, but just to keep the, all the employees they have, we think is actually a win for Massachusetts because in the absence of that new investment, um, the existing employees are at real risk of the, of the company closing or the company moving uh, to a much lower cost uh, environment. So um, we have, uh, Professor Bluestone uh, has documented because the uh, age in the manufacturing workforce mm -hmm. today is uh, over 55. Uh, if we just keep the same number of manufacturing jobs that we have now for the next 10 years, we're actually going to need 100,000 new people to come into the field just to replace 
the people who will be retiring uh, out of that industry. So uh, keeping, uh, maintaining the number of workers here, growing the output of these plants, making them more productive and their products more competitive uh, is going to be a, uh, an opportunity for tens of thousands of young mm -hmm. people to get a good job over the next few years. Mm -hmm. Now let's switch over to a different part of your portfolio. Yes. But it has a lot to do with uh, the underlying strength and harmony within the economy, and that's housing. Housing. Uh, you know, a lot of these people, uh, you know, also need a place to live uh, that they can afford. And uh, I know that the administration has looked at you know, smart growth initiatives as well, uh, looking at ways in which we can uh, maximize, uh, you know, uh, you know, places where people can live that are close to where they work or close to transportation centers that get them to and from work, thereby limiting the impact on the environment and, uh, and also maximizing the opportunity for uh, a better lifestyle. Right. Yeah. So uh, the governor did put housing and economic development together, as we talked about. Uh, he was the first governor to do that, and he did it, as you said, for the simple reason uh, that uh, the availability of housing, reasonably priced housing for young people and young families and the kind of housing that they want, uh, is an economic competitiveness issue in this state. Uh, it's very clear that our innovation companies that we have here uh, choose to locate and grow in Massachusetts because of the talent that's here. And if, uh, as has happened uh, in the earlier part of the uh, last decade, uh, if young people and young families are moving out of Massachusetts because of housing prices, feeling that they can get a much de better deal on housing elsewhere, uh, then uh, that, is a, that is not a great uh, position for our companies uh, they hear because of the talent. They don't want to see the talent leaving. So we have focused on uh, housing creation and production as a big part of our economic agenda. Uh, and as you say, uh, really focused on uh, trying to promote that housing in smart <coughs> growth locations. Uh, smart growth has always been a smart, environmentally smart idea. But in the last uh, five or ten years, it's also been... Uh, what the marketplace wants. Uh, more and more, you, you are very familiar with the demographics. I'm sure all your viewers are. Uh, young people now uh, want to live and work and play in places where they don't have to have a car. Uh, a lot of young people uh, not even choosing to buy a car or not even choosing to have a driver's license. And uh, we need more of those kinds of places in Massachusetts if we, the talent is going to stay here. So I was down, for example, a few weeks ago in uh, downtown Taunton. And the other thing that's great about Massachusetts is we have these terrific downtowns that were built 100, 150 years ago um, with beautiful architecture. And, you know, they're really not making buildings like that anymore. They really aren't. And so that is an opportunity for us uh, to create places that have uh, <coughs> shops and restaurants on the first floor, apartments upstairs, maybe even offices for small mm -hmm. businesses to be in. And you really can imagine uh, people being able to live and work and, and eat out and shop and play uh, without hardly needing to use uh, a car. And uh, obviously the train and, and bus service also in downtown Taunton. So that's very, uh, uh, that's very exciting. And, and Taunton is one of several opportunities around the state where we are um, reinvesting uh, in some great downtowns and village centers uh, that have some great uh, architecture and some great streetscapes and and uh, with a little reinvestment uh, can be very attractive places. To well, live. you can bring a lot of these uh, older communities back to life again, you know, and uh, and that's starting to happen. We're starting to see that take place and, and it's because of the investment, the commitment, and also a comprehensive economic development strategy, which includes housing, economic development, connection with higher education, uh, transportation, which this administration has been supportive of. I, I just wish we could, you know, uh, finally see that South Coast Rail done, but I know that's not within your secretariat. And actually, uh, Secretary of Transportation and the Governor will be in uh, the Southeast uh, Mass area uh, very shortly, 
to talk about those issues in, in, in general. Uh, but I, I thank you very much for everything that you've been doing thus far. We're going to take a, a short break and uh, you know, have a uh, public, public service announcement. And we would ask you to hang in there because we're going to be talking uh, a bit more with the Secretary of uh, Housing and Economic Development for the Commonwealth, Secretary Bialucki. So please stay tuned, and we'll be right back. <laughs> So, same time next week? Well, of course. Well, welcome back to the Commonwealth Report. I'm State Senator Mark Pacheco, and we've been talking with uh, Secretary Bilecki, uh, Secretary of Housing and uh, Economic Development in the Commonwealth, and it's been great to have you with us uh, on uh, tonight's program. And as we were, just before we went to the break, we're talking about uh, economic development in general, uh, talking about a whole range of issues, whether we look at housing and transportation, uh, all the key elements that uh, you know, make it possible to have a vibrant economy. And of course, we've been through our struggles and in, in, in you're helping us uh, focus on uh, a good comprehensive uh, you know, plan for southeastern Massachusetts. Tell me, uh, you know, as we, as, we, as we think about this plan, and, and you, you just mentioned before we went to break about a lot of the, the, the young people out there and right. not wanting to even have to have an automobile, which, which, which maybe makes a few parents happy. Yes. <laughs> you know, when they're thinking about that yeah. as a trend yeah. that's, uh, that's starting to happen. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit more about that what you're starting to see, uh, you know, trending across so the Commonwealth the and, yeah. you know, with, with a younger age group, college age and, and just beyond that. So the point that you made is very important. It's, it's the jobs, it's the housing, it's the transportation network. All of those things are critically important to deciding where people want to live, where they want to grow up, raise their family. And uh, our goal is to really make every region of the state to be a place where talented young people could decide, this is a good place for me to go and stay and put down my roots. We don't want people leaving for greater Boston. Uh, we want people to feel that if they were born and raised in southeastern Mass, if they want to get a good job or start a new company, that everything is there for them to do that uh, right in southeastern Mass and to uh, make a go of it right there. Mm -hmm. And of course, the transportation connectivity is, is a huge piece of that. And that's why I've been so pleased that the administration has tried, you know, to do everything they can to uh, see if we can't stimulate that right. the, the transportation investment, including, you know, bike trails uh, throughout southeastern Massachusetts. All of those, uh, all of those amenities, and uh, you know, we've got a long way to go, but uh, uh, I certainly hope that we're able to uh, accomplish that sometime down the road. A lot of it may be in. Uh, the, the bailiwick of whoever the next governor will yes. be. But uh, I thank uh, you and the administration for their work in, in that regard. Any final comments before we, we sign off? Any, any message you want to give uh, well, just to, to say, uh, yeah. the citizens in Southeastern Mass? Just to say I, I'm optimistic. As you said, this has been uh, a really tough five years uh, for the Massachusetts economy and all of us in the United States. Uh, but I think we are in a position now when we can look ahead over the next five or ten years and we can say that whether it's education, transportation, um, we have put down some good roots, a solid foundation uh, for success and uh, look forward to working uh, with you uh, and others regionally and uh, to take advantage uh, of these opportunities and uh, it's a bright future looking ahead. Well, thank you very much for being on the program and, and uh continue the tremendous leadership that you brought to uh, the agency and we continue to uh, we'll be continuing to work with you uh, to improve uh, our region of the state and the state as a whole and thank you all very much for tuning in to the Commonwealth Report